Hey there, welcome back to our Sky Tonight program. This is Seth Mayo, Curator of Science at the Loman Planetarium at MOAS. I want to say Happy New Year. Great to be with you here in 2023. And in this episode, we're covering the dates of January 2nd through January 8th. We're going to first talk about the annual quadrated meteor shower. Then we're going to mention perihelion when Earth is closest to the sun. We'll follow it up with a look at the full moon and end with a look at the entire month of January and what the sky holds for us. So let's get to it. Coming up here on the late evening of Tuesday, January 3rd, or the early morning of Wednesday, January 4th, we have the peak of the annual quadrated meteor shower. Maybe a lesser known meteor shower, but it starts off the new year. And this is a meteor shower that you're going to have to wait quite late to see the radiant point. So by the time we get to late evening on the 3rd, when the actual peak is happening, the radiant point actually hasn't even risen in the northeast. This is a very far northerly type of meteor shower. So if we do go a little bit later and move past midnight all the way until about 1 or maybe even 2 in the morning here local time, we'll turn on the meteor shower indicator here, and there we have the radiant point for the quadrantids there. And if you notice right above it is the famous grouping of stars of the Big Dipper here. So real late or early morning, you can find the Big Dipper has risen here in the Northern Hemisphere. And those stars with the handle and the bowl are pretty recognizable. The quadrantids actually are inside of an old constellation that doesn't exist anymore called Quadrans Moralis. That's where the name quadrantids come from, which means wall quadrant used to exist in this area. Now, technically speaking, this Radium Point lies in a constellation called Boötes, the herdsman, nearby the bright star Arcturus that we see there. So this is a constellation you can see real late or real early in the morning at this time of the year, and nearby you can see the Radiant Point for this particular meteor shower. Now the quadrants can sometimes give you up to 25 meteors per hour if it's on a really good night, but the only bad thing about this year's opportunity is that the moon is fairly large by the time the radiant point is risen high enough. You can see the gibbous moon here near Mars right there. There is a chance that if you stay up late enough or get up early enough in the morning, maybe close to about four o'clock in the morning local time before the sun has risen, you'll see the radiant point for the quadratids is quite high in the sky, but also you can see the moon has set. And this is already past five in the morning, so it's still kind of dark by then, and maybe you'll have a chance to see that if you're up at the right time. So this meteor shower that is not as well known can sometimes provide a great show, so it may always be worth your time checking this meteor shower out. It comes from an extinct comet called 2003 EH1, so now it's an asteroid that's leaving behind a debris trail that we're flying through at this time of the year. So here's to seeing some meteors streaking through our sky for early 2023. On that following morning on January 4th, we also have something called perihelion. And this is when the Earth is close to our sun in its orbit, which is a little strange, at least for us in Northern Hemisphere, because this is the winter time, the coldest time of the year. We went through the December solstice very recently. And now that we're the closest to the sun, you'd think that that would make it warmer. But that is not the reason for the season, right? Earth's tilt at 23 and a half degrees is actually the reason for why the temperatures are as they are now, as Earth is tilted away from the sun, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, opposite for the Southern Hemisphere. But regardless of that, we are closest to the sun at this time of year here in January. And in July, we're always farthest from the sun called aphelion. Perihelion is just Greek for near, that's the peri part. And helion comes from the Greek god Helios that represented the sun. So we have perihelion. Any object that gets close to the sun has a moment called perihelion, and this is Earth's moment on January 4th. So it's always kind of fun to know we're a bit closer. On average, we're usually about 93 and a half million miles away from the sun, but on this moment, at 11.17 a.m. local time here in the East Coast, or really 16.17 UTC on the 4th, will be about 91.4 million miles from the sun. So that's about 147 million kilometers 
away. So it's not a major difference in terms of space and how far things are, but it actually is a little bit of a difference where the sun is just a little bit bigger in the sky. This image kind of shows you the difference between a perihelion sun and an aphelion sun when the sun's farthest away from us. And there is a slight variation. You wouldn't notice it, of course, but it's kind of neat to notice the difference there. So anyway, happy perihelion, our closest approach to the sun at this time of the year coming up this week. As we get to Friday, January 6th, we have the year's first full moon that will be rising out of the eastern part of our sky. And the full moon at this time of the year is usually sitting inside or around the constellation of the Gemini twins, which we can find right in there. So there they are, and the moon is right inside of that constellation, a great wintertime constellation. And the full moon in January is typically called the full wolf moon. Apparently here in North America, at least according to Native American tribes, there are a lot of wolves howling at this time of year. And even today in popular culture, wolves and the moon are kind of synonymous in many ways, so it kind of works. And this full moon is a little interesting because it's also called a micro moon. Now this term just really means that the moon is a bit farther from us in its orbit at something called apogee. So similar to the term we mentioned earlier for perihelion, which means closest to the sun, or aphelion, farthest from the sun. Apogee just means farthest from the earth. So apa means far, and g actually means earth, just like the word geo. So that means the moon will be a little bit smaller than usual for a typical full moon. It won't be that much different, as we say for any super moon, when the moon is closest to us and full at the same time. So we have a micro moon when the moon's about 252 thousand miles away. On average, it's about 238,000 miles away from Earth. So we have a full wolf micro moon occurring on January 6th, the first full moon of 2023. Now that we're in the new year here in January, we can talk about some of the great objects we can find in the night sky when it comes to the stars and constellation, at least for this month. So we're going to move to the western part of the sky where things set. And at this time of the year, in the early evening, we can find that that summer triangle that we see for about half the year has finally set, at least most of that triangle. You see one star of the triangle, the tail of Cygnus the Swan here, Deneb, still lingering in the sky. So there's Deneb, looks like a cross sometimes. And these are the wings and the body of a beautiful swan that we find in Cygnus the Swan. So that still is high enough in the west and northwest. Something you will start seeing rise higher and higher in the western sky, especially right after sunset right now, is the planet Venus. So Venus is getting higher and higher and it shines as the brightest planet in our sky. So it really stands out. Early evening in January, it's still a little bit low, but as we move through more of the early part of 2023, we're gonna find that Venus will rise higher and higher. It'll be a little easier to see. And it'll become what's nicknamed the morning star. It looks like the brightest star you can see in the evening. Obviously, it's a planet, but it's a nickname. Now, starting to get kind of low in January is the planet Saturn we can find here. Saturn has been in the sky for quite some time. Now, it's starting to chart a course towards the west where it will set by the end of January. So keep that in mind. You have a little bit more time left with the beautiful ring planet. And here is the planet Jupiter, really shining bright as the second brightest planet you can see from Earth. Still high enough to see. You won't see it past late evening and into early morning. It'll set by those hours. So take advantage of Jupiter while it's still high up in the sky. As we look a little higher in this area, we can still see the stars of Pegasus, a fall constellation still lingering in the sky here. The square of Pegasus is the body I always look for. And if we look kind of behind that, uh, a little bit to the north, we'll see Cassiopeia, the W shape of stars, still pretty high up in the sky. And the other kind of cast of characters related to her, like the Andromeda constellation there, and the warrior who saved her from the Clash of the Titan stories, of Perseus. So those are fall constellations still up here in the winter sky. Now speaking of wintertime objects, you got to look over to the east and southeast where you have some really great stars that are already really high up. You probably already noticed them and this is the perfect time of year to see these groupings of stars and objects. Of course, I like to really kind of center this around Orion the Hunter, one of the most famous constellations of the entire night sky. There's Orion's belt, shoulders, legs and feet, 
I'll click on his famous right shoulder star Betelgeuse to form Orion the Hunter. And in front of Orion, where Mars is still sitting, and Mars is a planet we can see for most of the night right now, it'll be pretty high in the east after sunset right now. And so right above Orion and where Mars is sitting, we have the stars of Taurus the Bull. There's the Nose and there's the Pleiades cluster. Those two clusters are part of this massive bull that looks like he's kind of duking it out with Orion. And January is always a great time of year to start seeing a little easier the brightest star in our night sky. We have Orion's belt, which points down to the star Sirius as part of the dog constellation of Canis Major. And that dog is kind of accompanied by a smaller dog just north of it called Canis Minor. And that star I'm gonna click on is Procyon. So those two kind of belong to Orion from these ancient stories. These are his hunting dogs. And just north of Orion, we have the Gemini twins there that are gray. And there's one star I always like to mention in the winter time, you've probably noticed, and that sits above Gemini here. You have a good view of it right now. And just the north of Taurus, you'll find this star Capella, which is part of Auriga the Charioteer. Capella is really a jewel of a star in our winter sky, it really stands out, is really, really bright. And at this time, we can find something called the Winter Hexagon. Now it's a little higher up, and now we have all the stars to form this, that form this giant hexagon shape made by six stars. We'll start with Capella here, and then we'll move down to Pollux there. That's a really bright star in Gemini then to Procyon, then to Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky. We'll shoot back up here to Rigel, the left foot of Orion, then to Aldebaran, one of the eyes of Taurus the bull. And then from there, you can link back to Capella to form the winter hexagon. I think I can even show you the asterism for this too. We have some other asterisms kind of scattered around, but there is that winter hexagon I was mentioning, or some people call it the winter diamond as well that really rises high enough for you to see all those stars in the early evening in January of each year. So here's some of our winter sky, at least in the northern hemisphere, to enjoy. There's so much to see. Of course, any time of year, there's a lot of other constellations to find in the sky, but those are some of the better ones that really stand out right now that you can find in different areas of the sky. That's it for another edition of our Sky Tonight program. Thanks for joining us once again. I will tell you that we will continue to do these great videos about the universe here from MOAS and the Loman Planetarium for 2023. We're excited to push out new content. We're going to evolve it over time and make it better and better. So stay tuned with us as we provide the universe to you all. Thanks for tuning in and supporting us over these last few years. So if you're in the area, please stop by the Museum of Arts and Sciences and of course our Loman Planetarium. We'd love to see you here in person. We got some great things cooking up for 2023. And as always, I like to say Happy New Year and of course, Happy stargazing.